gun lobbyist Larry Pratt was talking with uh, the talk show host Bill Cunningham, and he thinks that the Second Amendment is very important because of how it keeps both politicians and the media in check. Now, you're going to hear some audio from that radio show, and I think, personally, it gets a little bit crazy. Why does the media have such a bias against the Second Amendment? They, I think they might understand what its real purpose is. And its real purpose is to serve as a restraint on government abuse. And since they want to uh, be involved in government abuse, they kind of take it personally, I think. <laughs> yeah. Second Amendment is intended for people just like them, or perhaps uh, we could say like Piers Morgan. Those who know better than we, those who were born to rule, and we were born to be ruled. And for us to have guns kind of upsets that, uh, that order of things that they think ought to be. So I, I think they take it very personally. So yes. now this Larry Pratt, uh, first of all, they're basically saying the Second Amendment is to intimidate the media. Like they think that they can rule us and stuff like that. But we have guns, so we might shoot them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's very pleasant of you. He's about to make, get it, make it much worse. You'll see in the second clip. Uh, because he goes from inference to flat out pretty much saying it. Yeah. Uh, but remember, this is the same Larry Pratt that I had on the Young Turks on Current <laughs> uh, when we were debating the issue of George Zimmerman uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, he, with a straight face, made the argument that uh, George Zimmerman, since he owned a gun and possessed it at the time, had no duty to retreat. But that Trayvon Martin, since he did not own or possess a gun at the time, must retreat. Okay? So you have no right to stand your ground if you do not have a weapon. Okay? So you have special, different rights if you're a gun owner. You can intimidate and threaten people with guns, and then they must retreat or bow down to you or do whatever th that needs to be done. Uh, but if you don't have a gun, you don't have any of those rights. So that's that same Larry Pratt. Yeah, well, why don't, we, uh, why don't we roll the second audio tape? That's when he gets a little bit more clear in uh, the threats of violence against media members. I was told of a conversation with a, uh, one of our members had had with a member of Congress. And he was lobbying uh, on a gun issue, uh, but he was, uh, I know, knew the guy well enough to know that he's almost certainly he was uh, mild-mannered. He was just, you know, explaining our position. And apropos of nothing, the congressman, sa congresswoman actually said, you want to shoot me, don't you? Yeah. Well, you know, that's probably a healthy fear for them to have, although that was not the guy's, uh, he wasn't saying anything like that. It wasn't in his demeanor. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad that's in the back of their minds. But hopefully they'll behave. Unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> is it too much of a stretch to say that he did that interview in a brown shirt? Uh, I mean, when you threaten violence against politicians and say, I'm glad that uh, the idea that I might shoot them is in the back of their head, you know, and what? yet at the same time, the liberals are the extremists. They're ruling the country as dictators, and yet they're scared of these people running around the backwoods of Pennsylvania with rifles. Ironically, at the same time, in the rain. I guess Larry Pratt would defend me if, in the if I felt threatened in the middle of that argument and took out a gun and shot him in the head. I'd be yeah. like, oh, "Well, you just threatened that anybody who disagrees with you, you might shoot in the back of the head." So I had to stand my ground. I, clearly, have to strike. Yeah, and I have a gun, so I have all the rights in the world. That's what's so troubling about this too. It's like as if the Second Amendment is somehow given greater constitutional weight than all the other <laughs> constitutional rights, like the First Amendment. I, I just wow! I've read the Constitution and I didn't get that at all from it. Yeah. It's crazy. We're making light of it, but these guys are now actually making threats of violence. And this guy, I mean, you just heard it. He's basically said, I'm glad they're afraid that we might shoot them, that we might murder them, that we might kill them. Like that, I'm glad they're afraid of that. Well, what if you're not a brown shirt, what are you? I mean, if, if first of all, here's what you are. You're, like, you're admitting defeat on the battlefield of ideas. Yeah. Obviously, you're an idiot and couldn't possibly debate that woman or any uh, other person, so you threaten to shoot them and think, ha ha, I'm glad you're at least afraid of my gun. You're obviously not afraid of my mind, because I'm a moron, but that's why I have this gun, because the other body parts just don't match up. And he doesn't even understand the slippery slope he's arguing there, because that works both ways. And if mm -hmm. there's certain people in this country that got their hands on a whole bunch of guns, he'd be running for his damn life. And we've yeah. seen that in the past, so.
Wow. Oh, by the way, I mean, that's not, you, you know, you say that almost theoretically. No, no, no I'm not you, being theoretical. I'm talking right. about the Black Panther Party for self-defense. I'm talking about tons of movements in this country that have taken on that same ideology and say, okay, we'll match you gun for gun and see where that leaves us. Tavis Smiley, oh, su Tavis Smiley <laughs> uh, suggested that on Bill O'Reilly's program on Fox News. Mm -hmm. And Bill O'Reilly said, well, don't be extreme. Right. Don't yeah. <laughs> and then they had free lunch, too. Oh, snap. Okay. Oh, snap. Well, white people having guns, well, that's their constitutional all right. right. Black people having guns don't be extreme. Right. They're actually organized black people. That, <laughs> it's get, that are giving free lunch. Don't forget that right. part. So I, I want to make a, a, a quick point. This is a point I often make because I think that sometimes we, we just see the situation, like our media in America, our politicians in America, but you have to think about how you would feel if this was going on in a different place. So here in America, uh, what do we want? We want politics without money where people take their actual ideas and they battle it out. He wants people running around, ideological extremists running around with weapons intimidating the media. Now imagine if Larry Pratt, instead of the, the white man that he is, had darker skin and was wearing a kafeya, and he turned in his Ruger and he had a Kalashnikov, and he was running around Yemen or Oman intimidating and killing journalists. We would not think that that was funny exactly. or okay, but for some reason in the US, so long as you're white, it's perfectly fine to do that. Okay, like, is, this, is this what you want really, out of really your politicians? That's a good point up until a point. I mean, we, of course, they aren't killing journalists. Or really even okay, intimidating. So them. no, no, you're right. Like no, no, but cases. no. And now he mentioned journalists and government officials. So let's just let's forget Yemen. Let's forget shooting, and let's just finish the analogy and make it proper. So uh, a member of the new Black Panther Party goes on Al Sharpton's show on MSNBC and says, "I'm glad that white politicians, Republicans, are afraid of us uh, because I have a weapon." And you know, and I'm glad that they're afraid then that I might use that weapon. Right, then I'm fear. Okay, you know what would happen? The entire 30 Rock building will be evacuated. <laughs> they would all immediately, <laughs> yeah. not only apologize, be fired, and that.